Hogwarts Castle, a 5-inch gauge locomotive. This is part 6. Preparing the cladding of the second cylinder, cleaning and reprofiling the side rods, then painting the first wheel set. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the filling and rubbing down of the cylinder cladding on this side, because I already did that on the other side. The cylinder cladding at this side had already been filled at an earlier time with cow body filler. I removed this and filled it with JB Weld. It still needs a bit more rubbing down. Today, and believe me, it was well overdue, I cleaned up my workbench. Usually I work in fairly disorganised chaos. There's a central bench area that's kept clear for the videos, but this part of the bench to the left is usually very messy. I use it as a sort of a workbench dumping ground, but not anymore, it's a proper part of the bench now. In case you're wondering what's with the lamp, these lamps are made using pipe fittings and a friend of mine makes them in his shed. He sells them, and my daughter Charlotte and her partner are currently designing him a website. This episode, for some people, will be very boring, but I'm going to try and give you some good hints and tips that you may find useful if you have to clean up coupling rods like I'm doing at the moment. Normally, I would use wet or dry sandpaper, and this is perfectly fine, but it's very laborious and takes quite a long time. I'm not going to do it this way. Recently, I bought a set of Proxon tools, and this is a flexible drive, and I have a flapper wheel installed. This speeds up the job, but you do have to be very careful because with the flapper wheel revolving at this speed, you're very likely to make a mess of the job. So what you have to have here is a very delicate touch. Keep the flapper wheel moving at all times, and keep the flapper wheel square and in line to the rod. Do not use it like this. I've only done this for the video. The shape of this part of the rod, as you can clearly see, doesn't correspond to the diameter of the flapper wheel. So the best way to clean this area successfully is to use a smaller wheel. What I'm doing though is removing quite a lot of the metal because it's not finished off in this area. This is the back of one of the rods. Doing a job like this takes a surprisingly long time. And a good deal longer if you just use wet or dry sandpaper. And the wet or dry sandpaper that I would use is 400 grit. Doing this job using rotary tools is a really good idea. Particularly when using these Proxon rotary tools which go really fast and they're very powerful. But without wishing to repeat myself too much, when you're doing the job using a rotary tool with a flapper wheel or any kind of an abrasive wheel, only apply a very light pressure. Let the flapper wheel skim over the top of the work. Unless you want to do this. In this part of the coupling rod, I need to remove some metal because the finish isn't very good. There are lots of file marks and scratches. So all I need to do is apply more pressure. And now instead of lightly cleaning the top of the coupling rod, I'm removing quite a lot of metal. You can see and hear that I'm applying more pressure just by the sound of the tool. This next part of the rod was really rough, so I apply even more pressure, and look what it's doing. It's turning a very rough coupling rod into a nicely finished one. I recently removed 50 videos from my channel, which were not all my own work. And I did this because YouTube demonetized the channel on the grounds of duplication. There was no copyright problem, but apparently, if you duplicate something that's already on YouTube, they will demonetize your channel. Very strange. And it's only thanks to my Patreon supporters that I'm still making these videos. Why am I telling you this? Well, because on one of the videos that I took down, it was showing this happening on a full-size coupling rod. Apparently at the factory, they used to use a big drum sander on a very large machine suspended from some sort of a gantry to clean up the coupling rods. And I'm doing this on a smaller scale. It's time to change the 80 grit flapper wheel for a small drum sander, because this is a much smaller radius. And once again, even though I'm getting a good finish, I'm not putting too much pressure on. I don't want to completely reshape the end of the coupling rod. I just want to remove the tool marks that were left when the rod was first made. These drum sanders are definitely different to a flapper wheel you have no tolerance, you have to keep it perfectly square to the work, otherwise it will cut a groove. And before taking a motor tool to your favourite locomotive's coupling rods, I do suggest that you practice on a piece of scrap metal first. I've been doing this sort of thing, both on model aircraft, model locomotives and general steam engines for many years. And now for an even smaller radius, I've changed the tool for a lesser diameter sanding drum. 
This is an easy way to get a very good finish quickly on the more intricate areas of a coupling rod, but do not use the drum sander along the length of the rod unless you're trying to remove severe rust. And even then, I don't think I would use one of these. To remove severe rust, I would use a file with emery cloth wrapped round it. And then finish the job using a flapper wheel followed by emery cloth. For the areas around the softer bushings, I'm using a nylon rotary wheel and I'm using WD-40 as a lubricant to prevent the nylon wheel from melting. Normally, I would use a stainless steel wire wheel. In fact, I've just bought some because I ran out. So that's about it. All of the coupling rods and the connecting rods are done. In this clip, I'm taping them together temporarily with some masking tape so I know which set of coupling rods go with which connecting rod. And while I've got the masking tape handy, I think it's probably a good idea to mask the treads of the wheels. I could paint the entire wheel and then rub off all the paint, but no, I'm going to mask them. And at the same time, I'm masking off the axle boxes because I don't want these covered in paint either. This took quite a while to do. I had to ensure complete coverage so the paint didn't get when I didn't want it to go. And I was so busy doing this, I forgot entirely about the crank pins, but no matter, they're a bit greasy anyway, so the paint will just rub off. Now it's time for some primer. I'm using etch primer because there is some bare metal showing. But I won't immediately be reaching for the black gloss coat. I normally apply the primer first and suddenly you can see all the imperfections. Then I will fill the imperfections using some cellulose putty before I give it the top coat. In this clip you can see that my painting jig allows me to turn over the wheel sets without touching them. And now it's time to give the other side a coat of etch primer. By using this reversible painting jig, it makes it really easy and you can do both sides of the wheels in one operation. Anything that saves time in my book is good. And now to finish off this episode, here is a clip of the etch primer drying. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.